Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video we're going to be using HTML, CSS and JavaScript to create a digital clock. Okay, so this is more of an exercise for uh, new web developers who just want to see how we can use different parts of HTML, CSS and JavaScript to create something tangible. So we're going to be using things like JavaScript classes as well as the native date object to bring out current time information. Okay, so hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so the first step here is going to be to open up a new directory uh, within your text editor of choice. I'm using Visual Studio Code. I recommend um, you also use VS Code because it comes with plenty of handy features um, which we're going to be taking advantage of in today's video. So uh, once you have VS Code open, let's make a new file right here called index.html and this one is going to be the main entry point for the application or the website. Using VS Code, we can uh, enter in a single exclamation mark and press enter and it's going to give us an HTML5 template. We can now go inside here and we can insert a title. For example, we can just say digital clock. Okay, so now uh, we can create both the CSS and the JavaScript files for the uh, you know clock. So let's go inside here and make a new file called main.css and this one is going to contain all of these styles. Um, and the second one here called main.js, this one of course containing all of the JavaScript. So now going back inside the index HTML, let's include both the CSS. So we can say inside the head here, we can say link for CSS going to dot forward slash and then main.css. Let's do the exact same thing down here for the JavaScript. We can say script source going to dot forward slash main.js. Okay, so now we have uh, both the CSS and the JavaScript loaded. Uh, we can now preview our changes. So using VS Code, uh, head inside the extensions uh, tab and do a search for live server. You want to install this one right here and basically it'll just launch a development server for you to preview your changes as you develop the application and it's also going to automatically reload when you make changes to the files themselves. So once you have this extension installed, go back inside here and press F1, then say live server, open with live server. Pressing enter is going to open up the application right here inside the browser. So now we can see, of course, it is working and we can also just press F12 here to open up the developer tools, which may come in handy. So now we have all of the HTML and the CSS and the JavaScript linked up we can begin work on actually creating the clock itself. So we're going to be doing uh, first off the HTML before moving on to the CSS and the JavaScript. So when it comes to the HTML, uh, we're going to need to have a main container for the actual clock itself. So let's make a new div right here and give this a class of clock. So like I said, this will be the main container. It will contain the dark background and it also have a rectangular shape. Okay, so now going inside here, we can create two span tags for both the actual hours and minutes display as well as the AM or PM display. So we can make a new span right here and give this a class of clock dash time. Inside here, we can just say, for example, something like 1245 just to see uh, what the CSS changes are going to look like uh, when we get to those. But of course, these values right here are going to be updated through JavaScript when we get to that stage. So anyway, let's just copy this line and uh, make this class now AM PM. And of course, right here, we can just say, for example, PM inside here for, of course, 1245 PM. So now saving this right here is going to give us something like this in the browser, as we can see, fairly straightforward. So now let's move on to the CSS in order to, of course, style up uh, this text right here. So inside the main CSS, uh, we can see, uh, you know, we can actually uh, first up here, uh, we can we can target the main clock container. So we can say clock right here. So we can say dot clock to target the class. And we can say here, for example, a background of something like dark gray. So uh, hash and then triple three for dark gray. Saving this right here, we can see that the actual container takes up the whole width of the actual page. So in order to change that, we can set a width to be something like 200 px. While we're here, we can also set some padding. So we can say padding and make this 10 pixels. Um, and we can save this and now we get something like this. And um, 
Lastly, we can set um, just a text align of center to of course center that text and uh, we can also set a border radius of 10px to give us rounded borders. So now saving this is going to give us something like this and we can see we have the main structure done for the container. So now moving on to styling up the actual text itself, uh, we can target both the, uh, the class of clock-time and also the class of clock-am and then pm. And for these two, we're going to set a font family of something like sans serif. We're going to be changing this right here to be a custom font uh, towards the end of the tutorial. But for now, a sans serif is perfectly fine. We can set a font size of something like 30px and also a text color of um, just a light gray being triple three right there. Saving this is going to give us something like this in the browser. So the reason why I've split up both the clock time and the clock AM PM is because I want the AM PM to be uh, smaller than the clock time. So we want to make this 1245 a lot larger compared to the AM and PM. So uh, to achieve that, let's go back inside the CSS and we're going to quite simply here target the clock dash time and just say font size and make this something like 48px. So now saving this is going to give us something like this. Um, so that is basically all we need to do for both the HTML and the CSS. We can now move on to the JavaScript. So when it comes to the JavaScript, it's going to work by essentially uh, passing through um, our div right here with the class of clock. We're going to be passing through our container um, into a JavaScript class. Now, the reason for using a JavaScript class is because we want to be able to centralize all of the logic when it comes to our clock. OK, so if you haven't used JavaScript classes before, it may seem confusing, but trust me, it really isn't too bad. If you want, I've got a whole video dedicated to JavaScript classes if you want to watch that one before continuing, but up to you. Uh, moving on to this right here, uh, the first step inside the JavaScript is going to be to create a new class um, with a name of digital clock. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be passing through here our div, our main container div. So let's make a new constructor inside here and pass through here um, an element parameter. Okay, so now we can simply say this.element is equal to element. And this ensures that the object which we create from the class has a reference to our main container right here. That way we can do things like update the values inside the time. Okay, so now let's save this right here and uh, let's actually see what's happening. So let's make a new constant right down here and this one is going to get a reference to our clock element. Okay, so we can say clock element right here equal to document.query selector and we can pass through here um, a class of dot clock. Okay, so basically this is going to select the first element with a class of clock. In our case, I've only got this one right here. So now if I save this and go inside the, uh, the, um, the console, uh, we can then uh, log out the clock element and we can see right here we grab the actual element itself. So now let's make a new object using this class and pass through the element itself. So now Let's make a new constant right here called clock object equal to a new digital clock. And then we're going to pass through the clock element right there. So now if I console.log from up here, this.element and then save this, we can see automatically upon creation of the class, it's logged out the um, it's uh, logged out the element right here inside the console. And we can see now, of course, the object has a has a reference to the element itself. So now let's move on to actually applying some time logic. Okay, so we're going to need a method on this class, which is going to give us the current information about the current time. So we can call this method right here, get time parts. Okay, so this one, like I said, is going to return us information about the current time. We want the hour, the minutes and the AM or PM. So this right here is going to make a new constant called now equal to a new date. So this right here, this now contains information about the current time, such as all of those things, hour, minute, etc. So that being said, 
let's return a new object from this method right here containing three properties. The first one is going to be our. This is going to be equal to now dot get hours. So essentially get hours right here is going to give us um, it's going to give us the current hours value between 0 and 23. So for example, if it was 11 p.m. at night, it will give us 23. So because we want 24 hour time, we need to apply mod and then 12 on top of that. So now if it was, for example, 23, we say 23 mod 12 will give us 11. For example, if I go inside the console and I say 23 mod 12, we get 11 right here. If I was to say, for example, 8 o'clock, if I say 20 mod 12, we get 8. If I was to do something like, for example, 9 a.m., 9 mod 12 is still 9, so a.m. is going to work perfectly fine. The problem is, if I was to do 12 p.m., so 12 mod 12, we get 0. So, if this right here gives us 0, we actually want 12. So, with that being said, we can just say or 12. So basically here, we're, uh, we're just saying grab this value. If it's zero or falsy, then or and go to 12, giving us 12. So now we can move on and we can say minutes is going to quite simply just be now dot get minutes. So get minutes and that'll give us between zero and 59 for the current minute. And lastly, we can just say is am. This right here is going to be a true false boolean value. It's going to be quite simply now dot get hours is less than 12. So basically, if the current time is less than 12, then of course we are in the am. Therefore, it's going to be true. So now, if I was to console dot log right down here, clock object dot get time parts, we can see in the console we get all of this information right here, we get 9 as the hour, then 37 as the minute, and then AM PM is going to be false. So that's working perfectly fine. So now let's make a new method inside here, which is going to take this, uh, this method's value, so this object, and then put it inside the HTML. So that being said, let's go up here, make a new method called update. And this right here is going to firstly grab our time parts. So we're going to say const parts equal to this dot get time parts. And then let's make a new constant for minutes formatted. Okay, so the reason why we need to format the minutes is because in the case where the minute value is less than 10, so basically between 0 and 9, a single digit value, if we put that inside the HTML, it's going to give us something like this. So it's going to give us, for example, 12.8. So we actually want this to be 12.08. We need to add that extra zero before the actual value. So that being said, minutes formatted is going to be parts dot minutes. Okay. Then dot to string. Then we can say dot pad start. We can say pad start two and then zero. So this right here is going to ensure that our value is two total characters and for the remaining characters, fill it up or pad it out with a zero. So in this case, if I was to say, for example, something like two, then pad start, pass in two, then O, for example, we get zero two. Same works for eight, for example, if I say eight, we get zero eight. So that is what that right there is doing. So now we can make uh, another constant called time formatted. And this will simply just be the hour colon the minute. So we can say right here using the back ticks, using JavaScript template strings, we can pass through here using dollar sign and curly braces. We can pass through parts and then hour to grab the hour. And then we can say colon. Then we can just simply do once again, um, minutes formatted and pass that through right there to give our colon, then the minutes value. If I was to console.log time formatted, and then if I call the clock object.update, save this, we get right here 939. Perfect. Okay, so now let's make one last constant called AMPM. This one is going to quite simply just be equal to parts.isAM. Then we do AM 
otherwise we do PM. So basically, if the current time is in the AM, then we want AM, otherwise we want PM right there. So that being said, let's now quite simply say this.element.query selector. Let's select the uh, the clock dash time element right here. So basically, we're starting from the container, of course, this one right here, and we're selecting the next element with the class of clock dash time, of course, this one right here. So um, we're done that. Then we say dot text content is equal to uh, time formatted. Basically, grabbing this value and putting it inside our clock time span. Let's do the exact same thing for the clock AM PM. This time, of course, being AM PM as our variable. So now, or our constant. So now, saving this right here, we can see we get 9:41 PM upon calling our update right here. So it's working perfectly fine so far. So now, it's going to be as simple as just uh, making this run automatically. So, and also every second. Okay, so let's make a new method right up here called start. And this one is going to ensure that our clock starts and actually works as the time progresses. So for the start method, we're going to say set interval. And inside here, we're going to simply run a function. So this function is going to be this.update. So basically, we're going to run the update method right here every 500 milliseconds. So basically, every half second, we're going to check the time and of course, update the value. This ensures that the time is quite fast and doesn't lag behind. You could do something like one, for example, that will be that will be quite fast. So um, something like I think 500 should be sensible. So now saving this right here and going inside, oh, sorry, on the on the bottom here, if I call clock object dot start, it is now going to automatically every half second check the time and then update it um, as it goes along. As you may have seen right there, upon refreshing, there is a slight delay. The reason for that is because this is set to 500, so it only starts after half a second. So therefore, if we just call the uh, this.update, uh, as soon as this method gets called, we should now see automatically, straight away, it's gonna, uh, you know, obviously show the time. So let's save this once again. You can see it's working perfectly fine right there. So now, it's going to be as simple as just, of course, once again, calling this star method and then going back inside the index HTML. Let's remove our, um, our 1245 p.m. Uh, dummy text and we can finish this project off by just including a custom font. So uh, head to fonts.google.com and you can do a search here for any font you want. For example, I'm using the font which is called um, Concert1. So once you choose your font right here, you're then prompted with a bunch of different styles. So for example, in my case, this font only has one style. So I'm going to select the style right there. And then I'm going to go to the embed tab. And I'm going to simply copy and paste this link right here and put it inside my head. And then upon saving this, um, it's actually got usage instructions. So we can copy this font family CSS rule and then paste it inside our clock time and clock AM PM selector. So copy this and just paste it right there. Now we should see our custom font working and it's working right there perfectly fine. So that is how to create a digital clock using pure HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.